Hello everyone, and welcome to my General Hospital official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Carly and Lucas talked about Lulu's condition at the hospital. Lucas informed Carly that although Ethan wasn't a donor match, Holly had gotten in touch with him for testing. They soon ran into Ava, who thought Lucas was in town for a vacation and was shocked to see him. Lucas is the new trauma surgeon at General Hospital, Carly informed Ava. When Ava mentioned Julian, Carly yelled back that it was interesting that she would bring him up. Carly brought up the fact that Lulu was battling for her life because of Julian. Lucas requested to talk to Ava by himself. Lucas was curious as to why Ava had exposed Blaze. Ava claimed that she had not intended to, but rather had wished to criticize Natalia for her homophobia. It didn't help Ava in her custody dispute with Sunny, despite her expectation that it would. Ava reminded Lucas so much of Julian. Lucas was told by Ava that Julian adored him. Lucas stated his father was his deadliest enemy, even though he acknowledged that not all of his recollections of Julian were negative. Since no one had mentioned Julian in a positive light in a while, Ava requested Lucas to reminisce. As Lucas began to reminisce about Julian's marriage to Alexis, Ava broke off to voice her disapproval of the Julexis connection. Admire BNB, Days, General Hospital, or other soap operas. Participate in the discussion on our SC boards. To interact with fans and start a conversation right now, click this link. Julian was informed by Ava that no one should be evaluated based just on their worst transgression. She expressed her desire for them to be nearer. Lucas consented to consider it. Ava hoped Lucas wasn't wealthy enough to discard his father's side of the family. Lucas promised that neither Avery nor her mother would be thrown away. Martin claimed to Alexis that he left the picture with a helper, but the PI conducted additional research. He clarified that he had verification of Brennan's room service order, which came with a bottle of champagne for two. Martin was certain that she would be freed before the end of the day, despite Alexis's lackluster belief. When Anna got to Robert's office, she dropped a file on his desk. She informed him that she had evidence proving Alexis wasn't guilty. Anna also mentioned the rifle that was left inside a parcel to Robert. She promised to bring Elizabeth and Rick in to positively identify it. Furthermore, the rifle was registered to Sonny and the lab had verified that it had traces from the same river. Robert and Anna both felt that Sonny was the murderer and that Alexis was most likely not Jagger's killer. If Sonny killed Cates, according to Anna, the FBI would have to construct a case without the gun because they would never recover the weapon. Robert mentioned Sonny's desire to speak with Anna. Christina had knowledge, according to Anna, but Michael prevented her from disclosing it. It was verified by Anna that she would hold off on disclosing the ballistic details until after Sonny had admitted. Anna pointed out that Sonny's alibi was Carly. For Sonny's sake, Anna reasoned that Carly wouldn't want to lose and might want to retract her statement. Elizabeth informed Portia that the lab was particularly busy since individuals were being checked to see if they were a match for Lulu. She asked Portia if she would approve the lab techs working overtime, and Portia said yes. Portia asked Elizabeth whether she was having any problems with Brad. Brad's demeanor and work quality, according to Elizabeth, had been impeccable. Portia was concerned that Brad's job may endanger the hospital. Elizabeth stated that while she wouldn't support Brad personally, his job was commendable. Dex and Dante had a conversation about Lulu at the police station. Dante promised to spend some time with Rocco and Lulu by taking a break. Dex told about a parcel that was delivered, which was initially believed to be a bomb but was actually a pistol. According to Dex, the hypothesis is that Alexis threw the same gun from the bridge. Michael was seated on the couch when Christina went to Sonny's. Sonny claimed he wasn't upset even though he knew she visited Anna. Sonny declared he was going to confess because he was not going to let Alexis to pay for his misdeeds. Christina was not happy. Sonny told her it was the appropriate thing to do, despite her attempts to talk her dad out of admitting. Sonny declared, I want no one else to bear the cost of Jagger Cates's demise. While Cody was getting his liver examined at the hospital to determine if he may be a donor for Lulu, he ran into Elizabeth. 
a lot more people, according to Cody, were showing up to take tests. He was taken aback to see Brad when he arrived at the lab. Brad assured Cody that he would not screw up the job and that he truly wanted it. Cody said he would be glad to be back with Britt. Brad acknowledged using her name to gain entry. Cody revealed to Brad that he was Mac's son following his test. Brad heard Cody explain how much he had messed up, but Mac was the greatest man he had ever met, and Mac had forgiven him. Lucas was the best man Brad had ever met, so perhaps he would also be willing to forgive Brad. The idea excited Brad, and he embraced Cody. At that moment, Brad was reprimanded by Portia for his lack of professionalism. She brought up Brad's probationary period. Brad promised that he wouldn't cause any issues. After Michael drove Christina to her therapy session, she requested that he leave for work. Christina texted Dante as soon as Michael departed. She informed him that they had to speak right away since she was at the hospital. In response, Dante responded that he was en route to the hospital. Dex stopped Dante as he was getting ready to depart. Anna didn't want anyone to know about the pistol, according to Dex. Christina informed Dante at the hospital that Sonny will be meeting with the FBI at noon to make his confession to killing Cates. Dante wanted to know if Christina killed Cates or saw who did it. She denied having done so. Dante told her to keep quiet, trusting Sonny to handle the situation. When Sonny paid Alexis a visit in Pentonville, he informed her that he would be coming clean. He clarified that Alexis, Christina, and Carly would not face any charges if the FBI put it in writing first. Sonny vowed to keep Alexis out of jail for the rest of her life. Before Sonny requested her to look after their daughter and left, Alexis thanked him. Elizabeth was visited by a legal department representative from General Hospital. She handed Elizabeth a subpoena pertaining to Heather Weber from the Court of Appeals. Brad was tasked by Elizabeth to investigate. Though he was taken aback that she gave him the task, he started working on it right once. When Anna encountered Carly at the police station, she asked if she would like to recant her account of what happened the night Cates was killed. Carly was reminded by Anna that she might face federal charges. Anna asked if Carly was truly back with Sonny after displaying a photo of her with Brennan. Why would Anna care, Carly wondered. When Carly inquired about the room service charge, Anna cautioned her that she was taking a serious risk by dating Brennan. Anna claimed to have known Brennan for a very long time and to be aware of his abilities. The fact that Anna believed Brenna to be dangerous didn't bother Carly. Carly declared that she would not follow Anna's dating advice. Diane told Jason that she needed his assistance in persuading Sonny to come clean. Alexis didn't commit murder, according to Diane. Diane had to lend a hand because she was Alexis's best friend. Jason wanted Diane to stop Sonny from turning himself in even though Sonny had already made up his mind to do so. Jason predicted that Sonny's admission would have a significant effect on Carly. Jason and Diane talked about the circumstances. Jason said that he ought to have killed Kate's at the time. Diane added that as soon as Jason had voiced his objections, Kate's would have allowed him to die in Greece. According to Jason, keeping Sonny and Carly safe was more essential than what happened to him. He would disagree, Diane reminded him, with Jason's sons. The next time Jason felt like sacrificing himself for someone else, Diane advised him to keep that in mind. Sonny contacted Diane, interrupting Diane and Jason. Martin displayed a photo of Jack Brennan to Alexis. Jack, he said, was a well-known player. Next, he displayed an image of Jack and Carly. Martin clarified that he was wondering why, if Carly had gotten back together with Sonny, a well-known playboy would be dining late in his hotel room. Admire B&B, Days, General Hospital, or other soap operas. Participate in the discussion on RSC boards. To interact with fans and start a conversation right now, click this link. Martin was informed by Alexis that she did not believe it would have a significant impact on her case. Although Martin stated that she would remain a suspect, the photo seriously undermined Sonny's alibi. Martin was instructed by Alexis to give the police the picture. Alexis went on to say that Martin might report Sonny's cover-up of Carly to the police if he felt tempted. Holly was looking for Sonny, Carly informed him. 
Carly was curious as to whether Sonny believed he was being monitored or if he had seen anyone loitering outside his building. Sonny argued that if he was, his guards would know it. Carly mentioned that there was a witness to her meal with Jack Brennan. Carly reassured Sonny that she was his alibi and would go down with him even if Sonny had promised to confess. If Sonny confessed, Carly stated she would face accessory charges. Sonny emphasized that they needed to assist Alexis. Carly concurred, knowing full well that if it went to trial Christina would blow up and throw them all in hot water. Carly refused to take Donna and leave the nation when Sonny told her to. Donna would rather not to have a father than to lose both of her parents, according to Sonny. Additionally, Carly told Sonny that Lucky was no match for Lulu. Carly claimed that she was unable to abandon her family in times of need. Carly was aware of the little chances, but she was determined to fight any allegations. They decided that they would handle any repercussions that might arise. Christina revealed at Anna's office that she knew something about the evening of John Cates's death. Anna forewarned Christina that anything she wanted to say might have consequences for both her mother and herself. Anna recapped Christina's prior remarks, pointing out the inconsistencies in her claims. To be clear, Alexis did not take her automobile to the Quartermains that evening, according to Christina. Michael rushed in the door at that very moment, telling Christina to stop talking. According to Michael, Christina and Anna were aware that she shouldn't speak without a lawyer present. Before heading out the door with Christina, he stopped to give Anna a glare. Elizabeth visited Dante as he was sitting with Lulu. He was concerned that he would break his promise to his son in regards to locating a donor. Dante knew the chances were stacked against them, but Elizabeth insisted they would locate another donor. Dante received Elizabeth's assurance that every effort would be made to locate a donor for Lulu. Olivia entered and gave Dante consolation. They would not only wait for a donor, she claimed. Olivia got in touch with Nina to inform the press. She made contact with her own contacts as well. Olivia stated they had to have faith that everything will work out because miracles do happen. Lucky prayed at the hospital chapel, asking for wisdom. When Laura came they hugged. They soon learned where he had been and how he was getting on. Laura noted that Lucky's long hair made her think of Luke. Lucky informed Laura that he was unable to donate blood for Lulu. He was berating himself for not supporting her and for not being able to save her. Lucky believed he was failing Lulu once more. Laura said that Lucky should be allowed to enjoy his life. Laura stated that Nicholas was equally disappointed that he was unable to donate. For just one moment, Lucky wished he had been there to support his mother. I'll be leaning on you plenty before this is over, Laura replied. Laura and Lucky shed tears together. Laura said, if the worst should come to pass and if we have to let her go, will you please stay with me and hold my hand when I say goodbye? Michael informed Christina that he had tracked her down using a gadget he had installed on her phone. Christina has had enough of people dictating to her. Michael described her as impetuous. Christina declared she would not allow her mother to go to jail for a murder that Sonny had committed, but she would remain silent for the time being. Jason asked Carly what was going on, but she wanted Sonny to explain while he was on the phone with Diane. After saying that Diane was arranging a deal for him, Sonny hung up. Sonny made the decision to surrender and provide all the requested information to the federal authorities in exchange for one thing. Sonny maintained that only he was responsible for Jagger's demise. When Chase entered the room and announced that they had to go, Anna was on the phone, telling someone about Christina. When Anna heard the alarm, she questioned whether there was a fire. As they raced out, Chase informed her that it was a bomb. The canine unit found a package outdoors that was purposefully left in a location that was hidden from cameras, Chase and Anna were informed. They assured Chase and Anna that the crate contained no explosive stuff. Martin was prevented from entering Anna's office by Chase. Martin stated he had to demonstrate something to her in order to assist his client. Chase advised him it was out of the police department's hands and to take it to the feds. When she got to her workplace, Anna opened the box. She showed Chase what was inside when he came in. Anna raised the supposed rifle that Alexis had thrown. Alexis said if we found the gun, it would exonerate her, Anna replied. 
Another thing that could stand in Carly's way of a future with Brennan is someone blowing into Port Charles and creating turmoil. In any event, it's interesting that Martin brought up the idea of a spiteful ex's PC appearance, which raises the prospect of a different girl in every town. According to General Hospital spoilers, fans of the show have been reacting strongly to the dialogue and the October 10th episode on social media. Diane Miller stated something that infuriated a lot of viewers when she told Jason Morgan that she also loved Sonny Corinthos. Diane persisted, we both know there beats a heart of gold underneath that gruff exterior. That is, of course, somewhat accurate given that Sonny exhibits a tender side from time to time. Despite being a mobster, Sonny is shown as a figure with mixed morality rather than a complete evil. Thanks for watching if you like this video, so please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any update.